The Executive Committee of Uganda Law Society that last week failed to appear before the Parliamentary Committee on Commission Statutory Authorities and State Enterprises finally honored the invite. The Law Society team led by President Francis Gimara told the committee that is investigating the 6 billion shillings reward to 42 government officials that the law was violated in the payout. Our viewpoint is that since the enactment of the 1995 constitution, judicial authority has been very clear that the president's powers must be rooted in the constitution. The officials were rewarded for their role in the oil tax cases after Uganda won in the local courts and at arbitration in London against heritage and tallow oil companies. The society that is mandated to give guidance on matters of the law was also concerned that some of the oil cash beneficiaries ended up conflicted, yet they should have been watchdogs in case public funds were abused. Functions within a supportive legal framework, all of which is laid out in the first instance by the constitution and second, uh, in the secondary instance. A group of civil society organizations also appeared before the committee. They asked the MPs to investigate why the Uganda Revenue Authority settled for arbitration in another oil case, thereby causing the Uganda taxpayers a loss of 157 million US dollars, approximately 560 billion, that if Uganda could have earned if the case was decided on merits. They argue that URA had a good case against Heritage Oil Company. We think that Taro owes this money to Ugandan taxpayers. And we think that Parliament should interest itself in this matter and make sure that this money is paid. And we think that as members of Parliament, you will have done Ugandans proud. The activists also raised concern on why some agreements with oil companies were made private and confidential yet government acts on behalf of Ugandans. We do see that the issue of ensuring that we all agree that this award process was certainly not in order is something that we should pursue. That whatever the conclusion and the report, we should have a provision for recovery of the six billion shillings so far that has been given away. If possible, with interest because the value of money depreciates with the passage of time. A group from Elders Forum, led by Justice James Ogola, also interfaced with the committee. The key argument was that 42 officials should not have been given a monetary reward. The absence of the follow-up action of the auditor at the beginning of the money and at the end of it. Otherwise, the explanations as to who authorized it, why he authorized it, how much it was authorized would not have been a subject of your investigation. We need, therefore, to revisit our reward and recognition, recognition system so that we can then categorize who can be rewarded when. Senior journalist Andrew Mwenda appeared before the committee in defense of the so-called presidential handshake as a concerned member of the public. Why I, I am a strong supporter of this cash bonus is because the cash bonus was never promised before victory. It was given, it was promised after they had won. Never at any one time. He was tasked on why URA that has a policy of rewarding staff appeared not to have followed the procedure. Can you, can you come and assist the witness please? Okay. Is there a policy you know of in this country by government of rewarding public officers? I know of a practice, I'm not very good in knowledge of public policy. Expensive independent news magazine proprietor was caught off guard when asked to produce evidence of some of his earlier presentation on the matter that he repeatedly referred to. Uh, Mr. Chairman, my job as an investigative journalist is based on me protecting my sources. And it's going to be unprofessional on, on our part to believe that statement <laughs> without evidence. <laughs> Because you are talking to a judicial institution which is supposed to weigh evidence and either believe or not believe. But if it ends at this, I can't take that statement. Maurice Cho, NTV at Parliament. Yes.